talking about clubbing and all things um what reopening or all things german influence and a club that i've kind of long that i've kind of long considered maybe the best club in the world especially since i've been there um i try my best to yeah i'm again you know dance nightlife fanatic you know dj on the side myself so this comes from a very uh fan-based um perspective right this is not coming from somebody that's trying to be a critic or a journalist this comes from me just being a fan of nightlife of dance music and djs and that whole subculture that exists and just the beauty of going out at night on your own and experiencing and exploring the city that you live in based on the sounds and the clubs that you might encounter along the way and one of the best places i've been to a place that i would actually discovered via resident advisor is a club called robert johnson in frankfurt quite possibly easily one of the best clubs i've been to and maybe one of the worst cities i've been to which is a complete mindfuck but it was great because i went there not knowing much about frankfurt i kind of went there only on the strength of a feature on robert johnson it might have come prior it definitely came a, a couple of years before the book um and then you know i think i first stumbled upon robert johnson because of a video i found on youtube of ricardo villa lobos playing there um of course there's no videos allowed in there and no pictures but this might have been you know we're just one of those kind of one-off occasions where somebody was managed to kind of sneak a couple a couple of quick videos as the sun was rising in the morning um the light kind of you know bleeding through into the dance floor the djs behind you know through the from the, from the back of the DJs through to the dance floor if you know what the, the kind of layout of Robert Johnson is you know how magical that looks and I was like wow I have to go there and then of course that coincided me stumbling upon an article on Robert Johnson via resident advisor that was super detailed kind of running through the entire history of the place and it just kind of got me you know that was back in the day resident advisor was bloody resident advisor so I booked the ticket jumped on the easy jet went there it was flipping long to get just to get to the flipping airport right it's like a, I think the easy jet um airport is like frankfurt um oh our man or something whatever however you pronounce that to word so you end up like 40 minutes away from the city center you get a coach into the city center and then from there i was in my hostel for a bit did a bit of walking around and you realize quite quickly that wow frankfurt is disgusting right it's the finance what capital of germany um and it's also a home to and a you know some of the grossest looking strip clubs and you know brothels i've ever seen in my life um really i won't say aggressive but overly friendly um turkish kind of goons out, out in front you know hooting and hollering and telling you if you want to come in especially being a young black gentleman myself i got quite a bit of attention out there in terms of you know coming in and experience some of the goodies in there but of course i um rejected so much to go in there because i'm a christian i don't do that sort of stuff <laughs> but yeah um going to the club itself was an experience man it was easily one of my best clubbing experiences to go um i ended up seeing i think it might have been two i see i still it might have been dixon i'm not too sure it was it was a long time ago but easy one of the best times i've been um easy one of my best clubbing experiences and i got a lot of respect for atta and the guy that co-founds it and a lot of people around it but this interview with him via resident advisor called perspectives from the scene where they interview various people within the scene of course from booking agents to uh managers to club owners to djs and just kind of get their perspective on what's going on especially with covid and i guess i would try to listen to the people that actually have a horse in the race people have skin in the game when it comes to running a business during covid because they'd have a little bit more of a sixth sense of what's going on out there right what the actual climate is and he said something very concerning that kind of threw me aback in terms of the timeline and opening up and really kind of was sobering and kind of woke me up in terms of how long this is actually going to take and where we are in terms of recovery and i think it's somewhere long here so this is um an article from robert johnson says that's not robert johnson at a makia flow wrinkle Rankle, sorry, tell Andrew Rice why the beloved Offenbach Club won't be holding any events until there's a COVID-19 vaccine. So they're taking a completely different approach from any other club. They're not doing any beer gardens. They're not doing any outdoor seatings, nothing whatsoever. They're just, they're just saying that the, the richness of a Robert Johnson experience can only be experienced the way that it has been in the past. And until there's a vaccine, they're not going to kind of, you know, cheapen their brand in any kind of way or offer some a mediocre product um, to make that work so let's see here da, 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 da. 
was a bit what really struck me next year the fits 250 people rowing club the main thing not really um let's see if i can find it there here i think it might be around here so the people have tried but we don't go club commission where is it vaccine right let's see if maybe it's here somewhere let me see if i can get it up but there we go da, 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 da. yes okay da, da, da. so it says here what's the possible timeline for reopening at says the following there is no timeline the government tells us nothing we know we know what's going on on the worldwide and we follow what's going on in the medicine and vaccine we know that the clubs are the first things that had to close and will be the last thing that will reopen that's something i've just about i don't know why it took me this long to kind of click in my head but that's effectively true isn't it um covid a nightclub would be the perfect breeding ground for COVID in this, you know, as we understand it now. So it makes sense why they wouldn't reopen it. But it only had, you know, again, it just only been solidified in my head after reading that. Like, yeah, clubs were the first thing to close and it'll be the last thing to reopen. They're not going to want to take any chances, right? Um, any government across the world, they're not going to want to take any chance whatsoever. Even though clubs are probably set up in a way that they could probably handle it better than most places in terms of making sure that everyone has admitted into the venue, is checked prior, tracked and traced has got all the necessary checkups you could even especially with some of the tests that we have now ongoing or stuff that's in development i think there was an, even a test i mentioned recently that you could get basically get a prick on your finger and you could get a test within a few hours about you know a result within a few hours and there's one now that you can goggle for events of course there's the conventional stuff you can do with the medical professional but oh, that's sobering it continues it says um flow sometimes we think may will work minimum may to june, june next year but it could be closer to october and, and or november depending on the vaccine that's the only way you could reopen again with a full clubbing experience we decided that we would reopen when the when we have a full clubbing experience it makes no sense otherwise in the follows. so the, the, of course optimistic part of me thinks especially with coachella and all these kind of big festivals that are essentially pinning all their hopes on next year they've sort of deferred their events for next year they haven't cancelled them they basically just delayed them until the new year there's a part of me that thinks most of these companies aren't going to risk not having an event on so they're going to definitely put them on in some capacity i'd imagine especially if things are open air especially with the fact that yeah by then yeah you should be able to go to open air festival i'd imagine of course, it would depend a lot on the partners. Will, will customers and people be willing and comfortable enough to go? I think they will. I think the appetite is going to be really, 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 really high or strong, whatever it may be. People are really going to want to go out and let their hair down and kind of forget about their troubles in some way, shape or form. Um, but again, can they survive until then? That's the million dollar question. People will be up for it. They can obviously put them on safely um with the advice of the government and police but will they survive by then will they be able to hang on that's the issue i think at hand here but also the bleaker estimate which i think they mentioned here that they're looking at you know they think they're going to be open next year may june but then it could also be october november depending on the vaccine i'm not sure whether they mean if a vaccine is approved it's still going to take a while for everyone to be vaccinated right it's not going to instant thing to get everyone vaccinated in, in wherever you live or if it's a thing of like a worst case scenario, uh, in order to reach some sort of level of herd immunity, you're going to have to wait until next year. I don't know if I can handle it, man. I really don't know if I can like, legit handle not being able to go to a nightclub until the end of next year. It's bad enough now. The last clubbing is no, it's good. It's, I'm in a good place. The last, the last clubbing experience I had, proper one was Berghain in February, right? So I'm not going to complain. But to say that I can't go raving again locally, and support some of my favorite local DJs and clubs in the area that I live in until next, the end of next year is too much. It continues, it says, why is it so important to you? Atta says, a club, a dance floor, a sweaty dance floor, you know what it's like. Friends dancing together for what, uh, for us, that's really important. Ask for a translation for a German word, uh, sexual tension. And it continues, it says, flow. It's about the in uh, intensity of the clubbing, which I definitely agree. I think that's part of the reason why some of these sort of like outdoor beer garden things have been a bit of a letdown to just look at from the outside. And again, I think they're doing them pretty well in Berlin because, you know, they're set up for open airs, right? It's the home of open airs. Um, they've, you know, they've essentially got a long history and, you know, successfully putting together street parties and open air parties in some way, shape or form. So it's no surprise that they're able to kind of, 
you know relay that into clubs but not everyone's set up for that not every community is set up for it punters don't even want that sort of thing stuff it depends on where you are so i'd imagine a lot of places especially the ones without the garden they do rely a lot on what happens behind those doors when people get into close proximity with each other and the sound is blaring and sweat is dripping off the walls and without that it's like what's the point it continues it says atta if if you don't have the sexual tension on the dance floor to get really close to each other and sweat loud music the light the darkness that's the one key parts of having a good night I agree to that the good music the intensity of the sound system the people dancing it's not possible to have a good club night if everyone is standing one meter away from each other with a mask on that's not robert johnson which is you know maybe and not not a dig at else i guess because they're doing things differently but god man it's just making me think i don't know like that's that's the worrying part again about next year what do you guys think do you think this estimate is a bit um extreme from the um robert johnson crew they've uh they're basically mentioning that we won't be able to club again until the middle of next year or maybe the end of next year and do you also think that there's no point of going out until there's a vaccine because you're not going to be able to get sweaty next to strangers let me know in the comments down below